Hello guys, in today's quick video, I just wanted to show you what kind of a rig that I managed to come up with when it comes to deep sky astrophotography on my Skywatcher Star Adventure, because this kind of a rig that I have mastered here is something that I'm very proud of. As you can see, there is a lot of wire, so I'm just going to show you one by one what is this everything here all about, okay? All right, so obviously here is the main unit of the Skywatcher Star Adventure. Right here I have my camera. And the camera is of course mounted on the declination bracket that you see right here. Here's the counterweight, obviously, but I have a lot of stuff mounted on the camera. And as you can see, the first thing that you probably notice is the guide scope and the guide camera. I have it mounted right here to this um, lens collar and uh, the foot of it is a place that I attached a super clamp from small rig. And then to that I have a Joby micro ball head. To that I have a double ball head from small rig and to that I screwed on the guide scope and of course the, to the guide scope is attached the guide camera. This kind of a setup allowed me to have both the guide scope and the imaging scope very close by to each other so it's not like on the hot shoe or on the side so it's not like dangling and it's not susceptible to winds and I think it's a very good distribution of weight on the mount when both of the scopes are kind of tucked in together and also as a bonus as you can see I managed to use a single heating strip for both of my scopes so I only have one uh, heater connected right here to my power bank and speaking of the power bank right here at the bottom I have the power bank and to this power bank it actually has two outputs. So the second output is a cable. As you can see, one of them is the heating strip and the other one is a USB mini cable that is wired up to the Star Adventure. And that way, yeah, it's right here. And that way I am powering the Star Adventure also from the power bank. And the other cables, as you can see right here, I have the USB hub. And this USB hub, to this USB hub, I have connected two USB cables. One of them is going to the ZWO uh, guide scope camera right here. Of course, the other wire from the guide scope is connected to the ST4 port on the Star Adventure itself because I am guiding. And then the other USB cable that you have here in the hub is connected right to the camera. And then this USB hub is connected to a 10 meters long active USB extension cord. And this cord is going straight to my car, which is somewhere over there in the distance. And right there I can sit comfortably. I have my laptop right there. And because I have both the guide scope and my camera connected to my computer, first of all, I'm able to use the auto guiding feature. And second of all, I actually have a live feed of the raw images that my camera is taking so I can already play with them in Lightroom and confirm that I'm actually photographing what I want to photograph. So right now I also wanted to point out one more thing. As you can see, I'm not using any external shutter release. I have my camera connected. The shutter release cable is connected to the Star Adventure itself because I have actually recently upgraded my firmware in the Star Adventure to the advanced firmware. So I am actually controlling the shutter of my camera right from my Star Adventure and I can fully configure the exposure time. So currently I'm shooting the Heart Nebula, by the way, in Cassiopeia, I probably cannot see it right now, but I am using the exposure time of 120 seconds, which is two minutes. And that is my setup. As you can see also, I have taped in my uh, focus ring and my zoom ring because I'm going to be taking flats in a moment and I don't want those rings to change in position before I take my flats because it's essential to have the focus at the same position and of course the zoom at the same position to take the flat images which I'm going to do in just a moment. So right now, let's go over to my car and I'm going to show you my control room in my car. All right, so as you can see, I am in my car and here's the view of my laptop. Right here I have the PH2 guiding uh, software turned on. And as you can see, I have a preview from the guide camera, what is going on right here and also this chart right here. And this blue line, it is oscillating kind of around zero. 
and it doesn't have a lot of spikes. This red one is irrelevant because I am only tracking in the right ascension axis on the Star Adventure. So the blue line looks okay, which means that my guiding is correct. And that is something that I've been looking for for the past hour. But the cooler thing is that because I have actually connected also my camera, like I have just said to you, is that right here, this is the Canon software for uh, connecting to the computer. And it is able to download the original RAW files directly to my computer as soon as those rows I bring registered by the camera. So of course I am collecting all the raw images in the camera, but I'm also getting them to my computer. So if I go to Finder, right now you can see all of those images as they are being taken. I can already take a look at them in Lightroom to see whether all my stars are in focus, whether the nebula that I wanted to photograph is actually in the frame. So I have created this little temporary photo light right here to which I have copied a couple of those exposures. And let me just show you in Lightroom, what do I do typically in the field to uh, verify that what I want to photograph is actually in my frame. So here we are in Lightroom and let me just import one of those images. So I'm going to go to wherever I have it right here and this is one of the images that I have not imported yet so let's just import it okay let's go to develop and right now just to confirm as you can see the stars are pretty sharp and I they are definitely round so my guiding and my tracking is spot on and I just want to verify whether the heart nebula is actually in my frame so because I am shooting with the astronomic sealess filter I'm gonna enable my special astronomic sealess filter color profile and when I do that, I can actually warm up this image to something more manageable. And right now, just by changing the white balance, as you can see, the heart nebula pops up right here and the soul nebula is right here. I can increase the contrast to make it even more apparent or maybe a little bit of clarity or dehaze, whatever. But my nebula are definitely there. Here's the soul and here's the heart. So by doing this simple check, why my camera is already taking pictures live, I can already see that the images are going to be great because my framing is spot on, the stars are sharp, the tracking is spot on, the guiding is spot on. So I can just happily look at my scopes here in PhD2 and just wait for all of the images to be collected. So as you can see, this is a very efficient rig. Everything is connected to where it should be connected. And I can just sit back in my car, watch the charts in PhD2 and take a look at those images as they come via USB to my computer live those raw images I can verify that everything is going fine and that way I know for sure that when I head back home and I can edit this piece of material then the results will be great. I will be making a dedicated video about the advanced firmware for the Skywatcher Star Adventure so if you want to check this out definitely subscribe to my channel and also be making a lot of these uh, in the field kind of astrophotography vlogs in the coming future so definitely it is worth subscribing give this video a like if you liked it and here is the final photo of the heart nebula from today see you next time bye